What are some of the, the as LT and LT Advance are deployed by the carriers, what are the, uh, some of the symptoms of uh, they're going to see in terms of problems with the RF path? Well, some of the key sy symptoms that are seen in deploying LTE in the RF path, the most specific one is the introduction of noise or interference and more specifically PIM. Um, in the U.S., LTE is being deployed primarily at 700 megahertz. So there's new opportunities for frequency mixing where when done in an uncareful way, that frequency mix can generate a passive intermod product in the RF path. And of course, that can be quite a concern and a limiter in the capacity and the capability of the system to do as it was expected to do. And then beyond that, there's simple noise, just uh, RF noise in the network, which can be caused by external interferers. It can be caused by uh, the fact that some of the existing 2G equipment may have been deployed for 10 to 15 years. And that 2G equipment was designed and implemented at a point in time when the performance standards were different than they are in LTE, for example. So a piece of equipment that's perfectly performing to its original standards 10 years ago may not perform well when in close physical proximity to a brand new piece of technology. So all those things create interference. So one of, one of the key things that we're aimed at is what happens in the RF path that we can impact that reduces interference, that certainly protects against PIM, and where possible adds to the signal strength. Okay. What are some of, you mentioned 2G and 3G and some of the new systems coming out. What are some of the challenges carriers face in implementing new technologies without, without damaging the old technologies that are uh, generating revenue for them today? Well, as, as operators implement new technology, they uh, are very concerned about their existing 2G or 3G network. That's what's paying the bills today. Uh, so certainly there's a concern about schedule and timing. There's crucial marketing launches of new handsets that are occurring, and every operator wants to make sure that as they launch the new handset technology at the consumer side, the network is ready and capable of handling that additional traffic. So there's a urgency of the timing that needs to be done. Uh, but again, when we go back and look at what's actually occurring on cell sites, there's a physical implementation challenge. LTE is implemented at 700 megahertz. So all the RF equipment that's frequency sensitive, antennas, filters, diplexers, all that type of device, require new boxes. And when you have a tower that is already heavily loaded just to have the 2G and 3G network, then the question becomes, where are you gonna put all this new stuff? So the operators have, a, have to either decide to uh, redo their tower, add more capability to the tower, which can be very expensive, and then you have a zoning protocol to go through. So most operators quickly look at devices that can, that can uh, provide multiple band services out of one box. So a big part of what we're doing today is working really hard to figure out how we can combine technologies into single radomes or into single box sets so that the new technology can be implemented quickly uh, without having expensive re engineering of towers or going through very complex zoning processes. So Bob, uh, what are some of the other ways that Comscope is addressing uh, these, these launching of new technologies challenges? So some of the things that we're looking at are, are wideband antennas, for example. So, so putting, instead of adding another set of antennas to the tower, uh, where, as, as Philip said, is, is space limited and it costs more money on an operational expense standpoint. So what, what operators will do, will take down an existing antenna that they're using today for their 2G or 3G network and put up a wideband antenna so that actually has a high band uh, capability for their existing networks and then would add that new frequency, so 700 megahertz. So we have, so you have a, a dual band antenna, for example is one way to, to mitigate the complexity or address some of that complexity in the network. The other trend looking a little further out, but is, is starting to come on today, is more uh, moving your electronics that you need. So today you have a remote radio head that's driving a, an antenna. So, so one way to reduce that complexity and reduce the loading on the tower is to take that active electronics 
and the remote radio head and, and either put it directly inside the antenna. So those are called integrated antennas. And so instead, instead of having to add three re remote radio heads, three new antennas, you just put the three new antennas up there. So you mitigate all that extra uh, weight and expense of having two separate boxes uh, to address that. So that's, that's, uh, that's an example of that. So we're actively involved in a number of those initiatives. Um, the, other, the other challenge, I guess, for about uh, the network is we all know about the growth of data and the, the increase of, you know, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the increase of uh, uh, smartphones and those type of products, you're consuming a lot of data. Operators are saying, how do we add capacity when we don't have any more spectrum? Okay, and so they're looking at uh, things like uh, an active antenna as opposed to an integrated antenna. So an active antenna is where you're putting uh, much more sophisticated uh, uh, capabilities into the antenna where you basically put, instead of just putting a remote radio head in the back of the antenna, you're putting a radio at every antenna element. And that gives you new features about how to tilt, do different tilts. So say you have an, say you have an antenna that's, that's putting out both WCDMA and LTE, you may want to tilt those differently. And so, so an active antenna would give you those kind of capabilities. You'd also have ability to, uh, to tilt the uplink differently from the downlink. And it's just a couple examples of what an active antenna could do for you. The second one, which is, is a very much is a big uh, buzzword of the, of the industry now, is, is small cells and adding capacity. They don't have any more spectrum. They need the capacity. So basically, it, it's, it's about putting more sectors into the network, sectors of capacity. So you can look at small cells as adding a new sector and, and basically putting it at, you know, for a, a building, for example, or a sports stadium or what have you. You also have new techniques about splitting the, the cell sites into, so to typically a cell site would have three sectors today. You can move to six sectors as, an, as a way to do that. So the whole idea of small cells is just adding more capacity in the network and adding more sectors into the network. And all of these things are, are, are big trends going forward here. Um, the, the show here today, you see them all over the show, and certainly Comscope is going to be a player in all those spaces.